Good morning, beloved listeners and grade 12 students of Davao de Oro. This is Teacher JJ, your companion for today. You are listening to Z Radio 88.5 Radio Z Escuela. Ziguradong Kuyaw, Ziguradong Lingaw. You can also listen and watch this episode via live stream at Z Radio 88.5 and DepEd Tayo Division of Davo de Oro Facebook pages. I know this subject is one of your most awaited subject here in Radio Z Escuela. And this subject will bring you new learnings and amazing lessons that will make your understanding of scientific concepts deeper. So, what are you waiting for? Let's begin this very exciting topic. Kindly bring with you your module, your notebook and pen, all throughout the discussion so you may take down notes, learnings, and as well as questions for clarifications. The following are some reminders in using your module. Number one, use the module with care. Do not put unnecessary mark on any part of the module. Use a separate sheet of paper in answering the exercises. Number two, don't forget to answer what I know before moving on to the other activities included in the module. It is a multiple choice activity that aims to check what you already know about the lesson to take. Number three, read the instruction carefully before doing each task. As for this episode, I will be with you as we accomplish some of the tasks and activities for the quarter two, module one of the subject, physical science. Number four, observe honesty and integrity in doing the tasks and checking your answers. Number five, finish the task at hand before proceeding to the next. Number six, return this module to your teacher or facilitator once you are through with it. Before we proceed to our lesson, let's have first our pre-assessment. What I know in our module on pages 2 to 3. Unscramble the letters of each word related to ancient astronomy using the clues that describe it. Write it in your big notebook. Number 1. They are much noted for their contributions in different fields. They were not only great philosophers, but great scientists and mathematicians as well. Go! The correct answer is Greeks. Number two, it claims that the planets move in a complicated system of circles. This model also became known as the Ptolemic system. Go! The correct answer is Ptolemic. Number 3. The shape of the Earth, it has bulging equator and squeeze poles. Go! The correct answer is oblate spheroid. 
Number four, it was believed to be in a fixed position in the sky. However, when the Greeks traveled to places nearer the equator, like Egypt, they noticed that it is closer to the horizon. Go! The correct answer is North Star. And for our last question, number five, a student of Plato and considered as one of the great philosophers of his time. His earth-centered view dominated for almost 2,000 years. Go! And the correct answer is Aristotle. Congratulations, my dear students! Today, we will continue to discover a new lesson. And can you guess our topic for today? By listening to the song, Round and Round Space Song. Just write and answer some follow-up question during our break. Kindly listen, and if you know the song, you can just sing with it. Hoagie? Hoagie! Where are you? Pink Pinkfong! <laughs> <laughs> Hoagie! Pinkfong! Round and round! Around the sun, around the sun, the earth in space goes around the sun all year long. great singer. So, can you now guess what is our topic for today from the lyrics of the song? Hurry up and tell me your guess. Yes, you are right. Our topic for today is about astronomy. But before we proceed, let's have a break. We will be right back after a few reminders. So please, don't change frequencies. The Radio Zispela program of the Division of Davao de Oro is being brought to you by Nueda Builders Construction and Supply Incorporated, Maverick Builders Incorporated, Mitch Construction and Supply, Archicons Architectural Construction and Supply, DB Construction and Supply, Hanawai Builders Corporation, Phoenix Corvada Tagum Gasoline Station, Master Construction and Supplies, Mackenzie Builders, GP&H Construction Incorporated, Metro Gear Construction Corporation, NEN Builders and Development Services Corporation, Max Maze Enterprises Incorporated, We Inc. Construction Company, Rangai Construction and Supply, East Sussex Enterprise, WM Construction, Councillor Boogie and Miss Marjorie Vertodazo, Icon Builders and Supply, and Apex Mining Company Incorporated. And we are back. Once again, this is 88.5 Radio Z Escuela. Ziguradong Kuyao, Ziguradong Lingao. To continue our discussion, I am going to present 
the objectives of this lesson. At the end of this discussion, the grade 12 students will A. Know and discuss the thoughts of philosophers about the shape of the earth. B. Identify and describe the size of the earth. And C. Appreciate the significance and the importance of the shape of the earth. I believe that all of you are very much ready and prepared to listen right now. So, open your modules on page 7 and focus your ears to listen and do not change stations because after this, we will ask corresponding questions based on the discussion given. In our discussion, we are going to use this key term as follows. Oblate spheroid. The shape of the earth, it has bulging equator and squeeze poles. Solstice. It is either of the two times in the year. The summer solstice and the winter solstice. When the sun reaches its highest or lowest point in the sky at noon, mark by the longest and shortest days. Eclipse It is an obscuring of the light from one celestial body by the passage of another between it and the observer or between it and its source of illumination. Heliocentrism The astronomical model in which the Earth and planets revolve around the Sun. Geocentrism Any theory of the structure of the solar system or the universe in which Earth is assumed to be at the center of it all. Have you ever wondered what the philosophers in ancient astronomy thought about the shape of the earth? Around 500 BC, most Greeks believed that the earth was round, not flat. It was Pythagoras and his pupils who were first to propose a spherical earth. In 500 to 430 BC, Anaxagoras further supported Pythagoras' proposal through his observations of the shadows that the Earth cast on the Moon during a lunar eclipse. He observed that during a lunar eclipse, the Earth's shadow was reflected on the moon's surface. The shadow reflected was circular. Around 340 BC, Aristotle listed several arguments for a spherical earth, which included the positions of the North Star, the shape of the moon, and the sun and the disappearance of the ships when they sail over the horizon. For the North Star, it was believed to be at a fixed position in the sky. However, when the Greeks traveled to places nearer the equator, like Egypt, they noticed that the North Star is closer to the horizon. For the shape of the sun and the moon, Aristotle argued that if the moon and the sun were both spherical, then perhaps the earth was also spherical. For the disappearing ships, if the earth was flat, then a ship traveling away from an observer 
should become smaller and smaller until it disappeared. However, the Greeks observed that the ship became smaller and then its hull disappeared first before the sail, as if it was being enveloped by the water until it completely disappeared. Ancient scholars tried to provide proof of a spherical earth and its circumference through calculations. It was Eratosthenes who gave the most accurate size during their time. While he was working at the Library of Alexandria in northern Egypt, he received correspondence from Sien in southern Egypt, which stated that a vertical object did not cast any shadow at noontime during the summer solstice. But this was not the case in Alexandria, where at noontime during the summer solstice, a vertical object still casts a shadow. These observations could only mean that the sun during this time in Alexandria was not directly overhead. Eratosthenes then determined the angle the sun made with a vertical direction by measuring the shadow that a vertical stick cast. He found out that in Alexandria, the sun makes an angle of 7.2 degrees from the vertical while 0 degrees in CN. To explain the difference, he hypothesized that the light rays coming from the sun are parallel and the earth is curved. From his measurements, he computed the circumference of the earth to be approximately 250,000 stadia or a stadium is a unit of measurement used to describe the size of a typical stadium at the time, about 40,000 kilometers. Our understanding about the different heavenly bodies can be credited to the important findings of the following Greek astronomers. First, Anaxagoras. Anaxagoras was able to explain what causes the phases of the moon. According to him, the moon shone only by reflected sunlight. Since it is a sphere, only half of it illuminated at a time. This illuminated part that is visible from the earth changes periodically. Second, Eudoxus. Eudoxus proposed a system of fixed spheres. He believed that the sun, the moon, the five known planets, and the stars were attached to these spheres which carried the heavenly bodies while they revolve around the stationary earth. Next, Aristotle. Aristotle was a student of Plato. For him, the earth is spherical in shape since it always casts a shadow. 
when it eclipses the moon. He also believed that the earth was the center of the universe. The planets and stars were concentric, crystalline spheres centered on the earth. We also have Aristarchus. Aristarchus is the very first Greek to profess the heliocentric view. The word helios means sun. Centric means centered. This heliocentric view considered the sun as the center of the universe. He learned that the sun was many times farther than the moon and that it was much larger than the earth. He also made an attempt to calculate the distance of the sun and the moon by using geometric principles. He based his calculations on his estimated diameters of the earth and moon and express distance in terms of diameter. However, the measurements he got were very small and there were a lot of observational errors. Eratosthenes, the first successful attempt to determine the size of the earth was made by him. He did this by applying geometric principles. He observed the angles of the noonday sun in two Egyptian cities that were almost opposite each other. Sien, now as one in the south, and Alexandria in the north. He assumed they were in the same longitude. Next, we have Hipparchus. Hipparchus is considered as the greatest of the early Greek astronomers. He observed and compared the brightness of 850 stars and arranged them into order of brightness or magnitude. He developed a method for predicting the times of lunar eclipses to within a few hours. Aside from this, he also measured the length of the year to within minutes of the modern value. We also have Claudius Ptolemy. He believed that the earth was the center of the universe. His Ptolemic model claimed that the planets moved in a complicated system of circles. This geocentric model also became known as the Ptolemic system. Claudius Ptolemy developed a model that was able to explain the observable motions of the planets. According to the Ptolemic mode, the sun, the moon, and the other planets move in circular orbits around the earth. However, if observed night after night, these planets move slightly eastward among the stars. At a certain point, the planet appears to stop, then moves in the opposite direction for some time, after which it will resume its earthward motion. This westward drift of the planets is called retrograde motion. To justify his Earth-centered model, using retrograde motion, he further explained that the planets orbited on small circles called epicycles, revolving around large circles called deferents. And we will be back 
Don't change any frequencies because we will be back after this short break. The Radio Z Escuela program of the Division of Davao de Oro is being brought to you by Nueda Builders Construction and Supply Incorporated, Maverick Builders Incorporated, Mitch Construction and Supply, Arquicons Architectural Construction and Supply, DB Construction and Supply, Hanaway Builders Corporation, Phoenix Corvada Tagum Gasoline Station, Master Construction and Supplies, Mackenzie Builders, GP and H Construction Incorporated, Metro Gear Construction Corporation, NEN Builders and Development Services Corporation, Max Maze Enterprises Incorporated, We Inc Construction Company, Rangai Construction and Supply, East Sussex Enterprise, WM Construction, Councillor Boogie and Miss Marjorie Vertodazo, Icon Builders and Supply, and Apex Mining Company Incorporated. And we are back. What an awesome discovery we have here about ancient astronomy. Right, grade 12 student listeners? Since we had lots of learnings about the ancient astronomy, it is now the right time to apply these learnings we have gained based on the discussion. It's assessment time! We are going to do some assessment to test if you really listen all along. But before doing so, get your notebooks and your ball pens ready and answer the questions that I will be giving to you. I think your notebooks and ball pen are already ready. So, we are going to start the assessment. Open your module in pages 12 up to 13. You are going to choose the letter of the best answer of ancient astronomy as I am going to dictate it. Please listen properly, grade 12 students, so that you can catch up and give the right answer on the given questions. So, are you now ready? I think everybody is ready now. Let's start! Our first question. Which of the following is the shape of the earth according to ancient Greeks? Again, which of the following is the shape of the earth according to ancient Greeks? A. Cylinder B. Octagon C. Flat disc or letter D. Sphere Go! Come on guys! The clock is ticking. Start writing your answer. And the correct answer is letter D. Sphere our second question, what is the shape of the earth as described by modern astronomy? Again, what is the shape of the earth as described by modern astronomy? A. Ellipsoid B. Oblate spheroid C. Hyperboloid and letter D oblate paraloid. Go! Okay, the correct answer for question number two is letter B oblate spheroid. Congratulations on those. Who got it right? For our third question, which of the following ancient Greek philosophers computed for the circumference of the earth? Again, which of the following ancient Greek philosophers computed for the circumference of the earth? 
Letter A, Anaxagoras. Letter B, Pythagoras. Letter C, Erathosthenes. And letter D, Aristotle. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Time is running. Write your answers. And the correct answer for question number three is letter C, Erathosthenes. Fourth question. According to Erathosthenes computations, what is the circumference of the earth? According to Erathosthenes computations, what is the circumference of the earth? A. 250,000 stadia B. 7.2 stadia C. 500 stadia and letter D. 40,000 stadia The correct answer is letter A, 250,000 stadia. Congratulations to those who got it right. For our fifth question, which of the following is 250,000 stadia equal to? Again, which of the following is 250,000 stadia equal to? A. 40,000 kilometers B. 40,000 miles Letter C. 40,000 meters And letter D. 40,000 inches Go! And the correct answer is letter B, 40,000 kilometers. Question number 6. In which of the following events can the circular shadow of the earth be observed most notably? Letter A, solar eclipse. Letter B, summer solstice. Letter C, Lunar Eclipse Letter D Winter Solstice Again, in which of the following events can the circular shadow of the earth be observed most notably? A. Solar Eclipse B. Summer Solstice C. Lunar Eclipse and Letter D Winter Solstice Time is running. Write your answer. And the correct answer is letter C, lunar eclipse. Seventh question. Which of the following describes the position of the North Star if you go nearer the equator? A. Closer to the horizon. B. Farther away from the horizon. C. The North Star is fixed wherever you are on the earth. And letter D. It disappears completely. Again, which of the following describes the position of the North Star if you go nearer the equator? A. Closer to the horizon. B. Farther away from the horizon. C. The North Star is fixed wherever you are on the earth. Letter D. It disappears completely. And the correct answer is letter A, 
Closer to the horizon. Number 8. Which of the following can be observed of a cruising ship if the earth is a flat disk? A. It will shrink then. Only the sail will be visible until it completely disappears. Letter B. It will become bigger and bigger. Letter C. It will not change its size. And letter D. It will become smaller and smaller until it disappears. Again, which of the following can be observed of a cruising ship if the earth is a flat disk? A. It will shrink. Then only the sail will be visible until it completely disappears. Letter B, it will become bigger and bigger. Letter C, it will not change its size. And letter D, it will become smaller and smaller until it disappears. Go! And the correct answer... For question number 8 is letter D. It will become smaller and smaller until it disappears. Question number 9. During which time did Erastosthenes observe the shadows cast by a vertical stick? A. Noontime in summer solstice. B. Noontime in winter solstice. C. During a lunar eclipse. Letter T. During a solar eclipse. During which time did Eratosthenes observe the shadows cast by a vertical stick? A. Noontime in summer solstice. B. Noontime in winter solstice. Letter C. During a lunar eclipse. And letter D. During a solar eclipse. Go! Time's up! The correct answer is letter A. Noontime in summer solstice. And for our last question, question number 10. According to Erathosthenes, which of the following explains why a vertical stick casts a shadow in Alexandria but not in Sienne? 1. The sun is directly overhead in Sien, while in Alexandria, it is only almost directly overhead. 2. The light rays coming from the sun are parallel and the earth is curved. 3. The light rays coming from the sun are curved and the earth is is flat. Number four, the sun is directly overhead in Alexandria, while in Sien, it is only almost directly overhead. Again, according to Eratosthenes, which of the following explains why a vertical stick Casts a shadow in Alexandria but not in Sien. Number 1. The sun is directly overhead in Sien, while in Alexandria it is only almost directly overhead. Number 2. The light rays coming from the sun are parallel and the earth is curved. 
Number three, the light rays coming from the sun are curved and the earth is flat. Number four, the sun is directly overhead in Alexandria while in Cien, it is only almost directly overhead. The choices are letter A, one only. Letter B, one and two. Letter C, three and four. And letter D, two and four. Again, A, one only. B, one and two. C, three and four. And letter D, three, two and four. Go! Time's up! The correct answer for the last question is letter B, 1 and 2. Congratulations to those who got it right. It's time to what I have learned. Oops! Grade 12 student listeners, do not forget to start your sentences with what I have learned. In today's lesson, what I have learned that the earth casts a circular shadow on the moon during a lunar eclipse. I also learned that the North Star has different positions depending on the location of the observer. I also learned that the moon and the sun are both spherical. A sailing ship becomes smaller and then its hull disappears first before the sail as if it is being enveloped by the water until it completely disappears. Lastly, I have learned that the angle of the sun with the vertical direction at the noontime during a summer solstice varies from place to place. So, grade 12 student listeners, did you enjoy your discovery for today about ancient astronomy? Did you find it interesting to share it with others? What you have learned from today's learnings? So, keep learning and keep discovering until tomorrow for our new discovery lessons to enjoy only here in Z Radio 88.5 Radio Z Escuela. Siguradong kuyaw, siguradong lingaw. And this is your teacher JJ saying, God bless and have a great day. Rajas Escuela Executive Committee, the school's division superintendent, Yofemia T. Gamutin Sasu 5, assistant school's division superintendent, Dr. Romel R. Handayan, OIC Curriculum Implementation Division Chief. Karina S. Frasco, School Governance and Operations Division Chief, Dr. Robin J. Riponte, Members, Cecilia Morales, Dr. Hilda A. Opeña, Dr. Arlene B. Lim, Dr. Eldecris B. Calzadora, Dr. Dexter A. Sikinia, Nohara O. Pinute, Noemi P. Canales, Dr. Grace D. Pontilias, Virgilito C. Pabrises, Juanito Lapiceros, Engineer Norberto S. Manlangi, Jomar M. Dumupoy, Bob Dalan S. Milabat, Medar T. Ampit, and Paz Eugenia Villusino. Technical Working Committee, Productions and Communications, Lorely E. Quijano, Given G. Hinampas, Judyland D. U., 
Donna D. T. Bolifer, Mary Rose N. Resma, Riven Manuel, Irene Lea C. Manguhon, and Bessie Aya N. Banians. Social Media and Packaging Team, Christian Anhara L. Martesho, William R. Ranara, Joan T. Iscoton, Roberto S. Acusar Jr., May B. Istanyol, Richard H. Arellano, Glee L. S. Blanco, Ralph A. Tabanyag, Angelo Gutierrez Jr., and Jade Karen Araiz.